Hi, welcome to video number nine, RGB color assignments and contrast stretching. In this video, I want to do three things. First, I want to review the concept of contrast and the concept of RGB color. Then I want to go into ArcMap and I want to show you how to assign a different color to each image band. And I want to show you how to apply a contrast stretch. So first, a bit of review. Remember that your image is made up of a bunch of pixels, and each pixel has a value, which is often called a digital number, or a DN. And the computer has to take those pixel values and display them on a brightness scale, or display them on a display level. And it can assign them values from 0 to 255, where 255 is usually going to be the bright colors, and 0 is going to be the dark colors. So consider your image. You might have actual pixel values that are clustered over a relatively narrow range of this color space. And so if you were to assign each pixel value directly to a display level, you'd only actually be using a small fraction of the, of the brightness range that your computer has to offer. So in a contrast stretch, what we do is we actually take the limited number of pixel values that actually occur in the image, and we use a scheme to map each of those pixel values out to a display level, such that the lowest pixel value might map to a display level close to 0. The highest actual pixel value might map to a display level close to 255. By doing this, we're stretching the range of values out, and we're using the entire range of display levels, which means we're going to get better contrast. Our eye is going to be able to see slight differences in brightness that we weren't able to see before. So that's the basic idea of a contrast stretch. And there's a few different ways or schemes that you can use to do this remapping. And I'll show you those in a second. OK, so now let's think about um, how we actually get color into our image instead of just brightness. So first, remember that satellites collect multiple images, which we're going to call bands. And band is actually short for bandwidth, because each image is collected over some section of the electromagnetic spectrum. And that's called a bandwidth. OK, for example, of the Landsat 7 thematic mapper sensor collects band 1 roughly over the blue part of the spectrum, collects band 2 over the green, collects band 3 roughly over the red part of the spectrum. Band 4, 5, and 7 are all out in the infrared part of the spectrum. So now, how do we actually take these multiple bands and display them as a color image? ARC lets us do that. It lets us take each of the bands and assign a color. So if we wanted to make an image that looked just like our eyes see it, that would be called a true color or a natural color image. Then we would assign the, the band collected in the blue wavelength as blue, the one collected in the green part of the spectrum as green, and the one collected in the red part of the spectrum as red. That would give us a true color image. But of course, we can mix and match. We can assign any display color to any one of the image bands and make any combination of false color image that we want. So importantly, ArcMap uses uh, an additive color scheme called the RGB scheme, in which it assigns the base colors red, blue, and green to each of the image bands. And depending on what the pixel values are, it's going to, and what the brightness of each pixel is, it's going to add relatively more red, green, or blue depending on how high the pixel value is in each of those contributing bands. OK, so that's our review. Let's go now into ArcMap and see how we can manipulate this. Looking at our project in ArcMap, we're looking down here at the town of Middlebury 
and we've got our composite Landsat loaded up right where we left off in the last video. At first glance, this looks pretty reasonable. The forest is green, some of the buildings are white and gray, but if you look closely, uh, the farm fields are actually this kind of weird blue color, and that's because ARC has switched two of the color assignments. It automatically assigned band one to red and band three to blue. And in fact, those should be switched. Uh, red is, in the, in the Landsat data, band three actually corresponds to the red wavelengths of light. So we need to switch these. To do that, we're gonna, uh, well, we can actually do it two ways. We can just right click and go into properties here and go into symbology. And then we can assign red to be band three and blue to be band two, excuse me, band one. And if we hit OK, um, that's going to give us something much closer to a true color image. Uh, here the, f the dirt farm fields are now brown, and if we find some bodies of water, uh, we can see that that's now blue. So that looks pretty reasonable. And so what we just did there is we, we adjusted the RGB assignments in the properties. We can also do that via the image analysis window. Here's our composite band. We can actually just right click on it right in here and also go directly to the properties from the image analysis window. Now in this case, I'll do a slightly different example. I'll give you a, uh, a false color composite where we actually make red equal to the infrared band. So instead of using band three, which was actually collected in the, the red wavelength, let's use band four, which was collected in the near infrared wavelength. And if we do that assignment, uh, we may see that everything comes out red. All the vegetation, which is reflecting heavily in the infrared, uh, actually turns out to be red. Okay, so let's quickly go back to the true color rendering. And then I want to talk a little bit about contrast stretch. And for an example of that, I'm going to zoom in on this area over here, uh, just to the east of Middlebury. And in this area, we've got a mixture. We've got some forest, some kind of grassy areas, and then we've got some dirt farm fields. And then we even have a little bit of a pond hiding right over here. Now this contrast is pretty good. We can see the different colors distinguish each other from each other pretty well. But let's say we want to play around with it and see if we can do a little bit better in terms of contrast. We can actually manipulate contrast uh, either under properties on the table of contents, or we can also do it directly in the image analysis window. So why don't we start out trying to do it in the image analysis window. And if we highlight the composite image, um, we can go down here and this bar shows us what contrast uh, technique we're using. Right now we're using the percent clip. And what that does is, I'm gonna clip this but click this button to bring up uh, the histograms. What it does is it looks at the red, the green, and the blue images, whatever you've assigned, and it generates a histogram of the pixel values. So here you can see that most of the, the red pixels are peaked around maybe 25, the green pixels are peaked around 35, the blue pixel values are peaked around 55. Okay, And you can see that this is a great time for a contrast stretch. The input digital numbers only span maybe a range of about 30 to 50 different values. And of course, a contrast stretch is going to spread those out across the full range of 256 digital numbers. So one thing we can do is you can actually manually slide this bar. And you can set the bounds of where you want to have the contrast stretch. So you can say, look, take all the values within the, between these two arrows and stretch those out across the entire 0 to 255. Um, and when we do that, we can see that we get a little bit improved contrast in the image. So what I just showed you was basically a way to do a 
a manual minimum a minimum maximum contrast stretch where you're just manually setting the minimum and maximum bounds. Um, there are some other tools we can use. Um, we can also use, for example, the percent clip where it's going to automatically actually go and cut off some pr lower percentage and some higher percentage of the pixel values. And I think we can set that up in here. Um, these are the options, and there's a bunch of different things. But under stretch, um, you can set your maximum and minimum bounds for the percent clip. So let's say we want to chop off the upper 10% and the lower 10% of the pixels. I'm going to hit OK. And now when we go back and look at our histograms, hopefully we'll see that it's made a more aggressive clip. It doesn't look like it really has. I'm going to try to input those manually in here. There we go. Now the arrows are moving. So what you can see now is that it's it's dropped off the higher 10% and the lower 10% of values. And what that means is that everything on the right side of the upper arrow is now going to be displayed as the brightest possible value, basically white. So what that means is that things that were kind of bright before are now going to be showing up as white. Um, things that were kind of dark before are going to show up as black. But the colors in between the two arrows, or the pixel values, are going to have better resolution because we basically have a smaller range of numbers that's now being spread over 256 display values. And we can basically see that here. Some of these brighter farm fields are now kind of saturated at a bright white. And you may see some dark objects that end up looking almost black. So I'll leave it there. And you can experiment around with these different types of uh, contrast stretches, percent clip, histogram equalize, standard deviations, min max, um, or none, which doesn't look good at all. And I'll also give you a final reminder that you can do all of these things also under Properties on the main menu. You can choose any of these uh, options here. So once you've got a contrast stretch that you're happy with, um, go ahead on to the next video.